Hi folks, it's Colin Fraser and welcome back to our video tutorial series for the Raza design. Um, and let's take a look at our menus and navigation. We'll start with the top menu, right up here at the top left of the Raza, or if we go to one of our inside pages over here on the right. So basically what we want to do is just update the different items within the, in the menu. And all this is, is a bullet list, a simple list, that we've hyperlinked the text and then we've applied some styles and some JavaScript in order to make it function as a menu. So to update this, uh, these items, we just simply, let's go to Dreamweaver. Uh, let's go into our library, our shared, and we'll open up the menu top library asset. I'm going to put it into the design mode so we can edit. And all we have here, as you can see, is a bullet list. The text is in the list and it's hyperlinked to a page. Um, to update. Let's just simply remove it now or update it. When I am starting a project, what I would typically do is, uh, first of all, I, I create my pages first. I decide what pages I want to have in my website. I use the storyboard page or just a scrap of paper. I, I write down the page names. I go and create my pages and then I do my menus and navigation after that is done. So that way I can actually link to my new pages. For example, if I have a new page and I've called that page events.htm, for example, right? Well, now that I have a, an actual physical page, I can use my uh, point to file tool to link to it. So uh, let's use this uh, as an example. I'm going to go down on the bottom. I'm going to change about to events. So I'm just going to double click or select the text. In my case, with one word, I'm going to double click, type in events. I'm going to use uppercase just to keep consistent with the rest of the top level menu items. You can do whatever you want. Uh, I want to use uppercase. And then I'm going to just double click again and use this link tool down here, the point to file tool. If you don't have your properties panel in view, just simply go to window, look for properties or control F3, command F3, F3, not F3. Um, and anyways, double click and use this tool right here, point to file and drag and drop onto your page name. You see, that's how you change a button name and that's how you link that button to a page in your site. Or you can just simply scrub through and type in the HTTP colon slash slash www and then the name of the page. The danger with that, of course, is uh, uh, typos. So if your pages are all relative or in your local site, it's best to use the point to file tool to make sure it's linked properly and you have the right page name. Okay, so that's the gist of it. Now, typically what I would do when I'm starting a new project is I get rid of, like I said, I get rid of any pages I'm not using, I create the new pages I need, and then I go to my navigation uh, library assets such as the menu top and I get rid of the stuff I'm not going to be using. For example, if I'm not going to be using the pages menu button or any of these pages linked in to the drop downs, because those are all, for example, element here. And I would um, go to the uh, quick tag selector down at the bottom and I look for the li tag right here and I click it. And that selects the pages item and everything below it. Okay, you see that? And then I just press delete on the keyboard and it's gone. All right? Now to add a new item and create submenus, I would just hit the enter key where I want to add my new top level item. Okay? And it's very important. If I'm going to have sub submenus, the top level button cannot be linked to a page. Okay? It must have <coughs> what we call the pseudo or fake link. So let's go with... Um, a different approach. I'm going to type in events, okay, as a main level item or top level item. I'm going to select the events button and in the link I'm just going to put a pound sign and hit enter. Okay, now I can create my submenu items under events. So I'm going to hit the enter key and let's say birthdays, okay, vacations, if I can spell it, and summer. I'm just pulling these out of my hat right now, right? So what we're going to do is link these 
different items to our pages. So I'll double click and let's just say, for example, um, I actually had a birthdays page and a vacations page already created. I've just dropped them over. So I'm just using this as an example. Obviously, I don't actually have those pages yet, like so. Now, I want birthdays, vacations, and summer to be sub items under my events button that I just created. I'm going to just select it and use my Oops, where'd it go? My out dent, or in this case, what they're calling the block quote button. So basically, we receive a little arrow with a with an indent like that. And I'm just going to go to the next one, do the same thing, and the next one, and the same thing. And that's it. Now I'm going to save. I'm going to update. And it's going to run through and update all of my pages like so. And I'm just going to go back to the page I have previewed here. I'm going to refresh. Now we have home contact events. When I click it, now I have birthdays, vacations, and summer. Okay, but this button here, very important to note, it does not link to a page. The reason being is if this is going to have a sub menu, in order to activate the sub menu, a user on a mobile device, or a tablet or a touch screen would have to touch the button in order to activate the sub menu. If this button links to a page, it's not even going to have the chance to open the sub menu. It's going to go zooming off to the page that you've linked to. If we use the fake or the faux pound sign, then when it's clicked or touched, it's not going to link to a page. It's just going to allow the sub menu to be opened and accessed just like a normal menu.